So the next thing we've got is KDE and GNOME. Now I think I'm going to build GNOME next because I'm pretty sure KDE has some reliance on the, some of the GNOME libraries. Um, there's quite a few libraries to build in GNOME and it's all of chapter 33 that needs to be built and then chapter 34 has got some um, applications um, I won't install all of them, I'll install one or two um, because there are applications, no point installing all of them um, unless obviously you, you, you want to have a complete GNOME installation so uh, looking at chapter 33 GNOME um, at my list, I'm going to say quite a few of these have already been done, I'll just check that ties up with what's on the browser and it certainly is it's probably we've probably done half maybe just over half of the libraries and programs so that's quite useful so I'm going to start with the first one which is totem PL parser and that hasn't got any dependencies so I'll just start by building these So no options here, just going to run this and wait for it to finish building. Okay, that's finished quite quickly. So, going to test this now. Um, I'm going to try the lang equals c environment variable again, just to see if I can prevent that error with the uh, character set from occurring at the end of the build. Uh, sorry, at the end of the testing. And yeah, it seems to have not put anything out so I'm just going to try it again now without that Let's see if I do get the error the test have obviously passed so that's good yeah I have so there, there seems to be something wrong I'll, I'll, when I finish these videos I'll look into that and see if I can find out what the issue is if it's a configuration I've done or something hasn't been compiled correctly anyway uh, let's install it now and that's built and installed so I'll tidy that up and mark that off Ten pill parser is complete so the next one is VTE again we've got all the dependencies So, uh, what have we got here? Uh, let's create the build directory and change into it first. And then copy the meson command. So, um, I don't use a, a bi-directional language, but we've got Forbidden installed so we can um, enable that GNU TLS if you do not want to know we'll leave that enabled the API we can add in we've got that installed um, so we won't put that in and we can add in doxic as true to have that build as well
Okay, so let's just look at this. It hasn't found GTK4 for some reason. It looks like it's using GTK3. Um, that could be something that has to be set, possibly. Um, I think what I might do is just check the meson. Uh, is it meson build? Meson options. Okay, so it looks like it has to be enabled, so I'll try that. It may cause problems, in which case I'll disable it, but let's try it. GTK4 equals true. And I'll have to... He's on configure instead. I'll just delete. I'm not sure how this works, but if I delete everything in this directory, it puts it back to how it was when I created the directory. Okay, so it couldn't find GTK4 for some reason. So um, it could be an incomplete implementation, or you know, some other thing needs needs more configuration, maybe. So I'll just leave that as it is, rather than fuss around with that. Um, so that's that. Now let's build it. Okay, that's done. Let's do Ninja test again. So I'll run this with the lang equals C to avoid those errors. I have got a strange, what looks like an Icelandic character appear there, so whether that's part of the problem. It could be the terminal I've got here in this TWM, I'm, I'm not really sure. Okay, so that's all passed. So it's time to install. So that's built. Tidy this up and mark it off. So we've done Yelp. Uh, we've done quite a few here. So next one is GNOME. Auto AR. So I'll close that down. I'll just check that this ties up with what we've got here. Yes. So that's good. Got the dependencies. So that's save link as. I don't need the API documentation, so again, it's copy and paste. And now I'll run the tests. That's all complete. And that's built. So auto AR is done. Skip GNOME desktop because we've done that. So next one, GNOME menus, that ties up with my list. And 
fact, what I might do is load all of these up. Okay, so no menus, got the dependencies. Save. Uh, that didn't delete correctly. So same again, copy and paste. And in fact there's no test suite, so I'm just gonna tack on sudo make install. And that's it, complete. So no menus, that's complete. Next one, no video effects. So I'll go back to this list here. Got no dependencies. Again, it's a straightforward copy and paste. And I'll add on make in install. Uh, sorry, that should be sudo ninja install. And that's done. No video effects complete. <clears throat> Shut that down. Next one we've got is Grillo or Grilo. No dependencies. Save it. Okay, so we can add in enable GTK doc. But it does say that building documentation is currently broken due to incompatibility with GTK docs. So I'll just copy and paste this. I'll add in the lang equals c ninja test and sudo ninja install. All right, okay, I should have extracted, so let's remove the build. And extracted this package. So, oh, did I put that in the background? No. Oh, yes, I did. Uh, right, yes, yeah, so I only put one ampersand there. I think it's, like I said, this keyboard seems to miss K. 
characters. So sudo ninja install the test for obviously successful. Back to the build. Yep, that's done. So that's Grido or Grido done. Next one should be libg. It is. Got the dependencies. So again, very simple. Configure make. Make check. Probably easier for me to type this. And sudo make install. Okay, so it's been built and installed. libg tidy that up and close the tab down. libps. Okay, we've got all the dependencies for this one. Let's create the build directory. We can add in see VAPI is true because we have Vala. Demos we do not want the demos. And we can build a reference menu. So let's build this. And run the test. So I'll put lang equals c again. So that all worked. It created a Windows you saw, which I had to click because we're in TWM. So Ninja install. So libps, cross that off. Shut the tab down and tidy up. So libwnck, Windows Navigator Construction Kit. Oops. Again, this is straightforward copy and paste, so I shall do that. So that has built and installed, cross that off and tidy up.
shut the tower the tab and want to folks next so save link as Um, we can add in this docs is true for some documentation. And build it and test it and Install it.
Okay, that's um, finished building and it's installed. So let's mark that one off. Uh, XMP, that's in chapter 9. XMP, that's done. So tidy that up. Shut that down. And now we've got libgrss. Patch here as well. Okay, so once again, there's nothing else to be done apart from copying and pasting the commands. Okay, that was a quick package. LibGRSS again, chapter nine. That's complete. One more here to do you power. Let's check there's no other dependencies, no. So again. We'll just copy and paste this. Now it says the test might fail, so I'll only put commands in up to that point. So it looks like the test did finish. Uh, oh no, yes, there's a, an error there. Uh, I wonder if it's worth putting minus K on that. Make check minus K. I'm not sure if it just aborted at that point. If there was more to do. No, that was it, okay. So one passed. Um, it looks like it failed, but it hasn't reported that failure. Um, it says like due to missing files, so I suppose there's not a lot I can do about that. So let's make install. <clears throat> so that's that, tidy it up.
and chapter 12, U power. Okay, let's save link as. So back to, oh no, not, sorry, not G sound. I have to remember I've downloaded that. Uh, this trackers one, trackers minus, so download that. So there's files to delete here, and we've got some extra options here, possibly the looks of it. So I'll create the build directory first, then the meson command in case I need to rerun it. So what we've we got man equals false. Okay, so we can omit that or put true in. So we need that one. Set compound. Right, so we don't need that one. If not installed. Right, okay, so we've got all the rest, so that's it really. Uh, let's check these output. That one looks all okay. Let's run Ninja now. And not sudo, sorry, lang equals c ninja test. There's one failure there, by the looks of it. There's a few failures. Looks like it might be trying to open libraries that don't exist, so that's probably nothing to worry about. I don't know for a fact we haven't got music brains installed. I'm not sure if that's still part of um, the BLFS book, I'm sure it used to be. There's no mention of it in the dependencies, but it could be just a dependency for the um, yeah, oh, it is, it is still here in the in the book actually. Live Music Brains, two versions of it actually. Um, an MP4, I'm not sure if we've got support for that. Yeah, oh no, we might have it. I'm not really sure about that. <clears throat> so I'm not, again, not too concerned about this. It's not going to be a final system for me. It could be the optimizations that's causing these odd failures. It could be the character set issue I've got. But it's it's no big deal. <clears throat> So that's installed. Have we got any extra commands? No. Always it seems with BLFS you'll get the odd failure here and there. Um, so it's not particularly wor anything to worry about. I would guess if you're a, um, a Linux distribution using Linux from scratch as a base, you, you would be investigating these and have fixes and so on too prevent these 
odd errors or you'd know that they're not serious and so on. So that's that one. We've got G-Sound downloaded so let's go straight into building it. And it looks like this is a copy and paste again. Okay, so that is complete. Mark that one off. So that's the basic GNOME system, if you like. But now we need some desktop components. So we do need to add in this. I imagine if we run it up to this point, it'd be either it wouldn't work properly or it would be an extremely basic interface. So let's do this differently. Um, no, actually, we'll do it like this. Okay, so these are the files we need to install, or the packages rather. Start saving these. Oh, is that still? Oh, it's still downloading. Okay, so this is again a basic copy and paste. And that's done. So known backgrounds, yeah, that, that ties up with my list is needing to be installed, so that's all good. So now go back here to Nautilus. So we need two dependencies here. The first one, lib handy. So I'll build this first. Oh, looks like actually we could have uh, added in some documentation there. So I'll put that in. So minus D GTK underscore doc equals true. We've got the build there, so I'm the build. Remove these bits here and just run the meson command. Okay, so now it's time for some tests. So 
So this is interacting with the graphical environment. So I'm just going to left click that each time and that's passed. Uh, Ninja install, isn't it? Okay, so it's lib handy installed in chapter 25 and I'll tidy that up now. Go back to Nautilus and we need to do lib portal next. So that's API documentation. So we'll skip that and just copy these commands. Okay, it's a nice quick package. So chapter nine lib portal. is complete and now we can install Nautilus Let's have a look. The port force we do not have, so we've just installed that. Okay, so we'll just copy and paste this. Okay, that's all passed. Install it. And that's done. And we should be able to run this from here actually, even though we're not in GNOME. It should still work. And there it is. So that's fine. Um, not sure how to run this properly because I don't use GNOME and the GNOME stuffs are quite strange. So um, I think it's probably oh, that's not quit that. That's well, one of the reasons why I don't use GNOME. It just doesn't seem to be intuitive enough. I'm sure people who do use it are quite happy with it. Uh, so that's Nautilus. 
let's mark that off as complete. So next is GNOME Bluetooth. We've got the dependencies again, so let's save the link. Again, it's a copy and paste. All done. So, no Bluetooth. Mark that off and tidy up. Shut that tab down, and we're now on to GNOME settings daemon. Um, XOR Wacom driver we don't need because I haven't got one of those bits of hardware but the network manager is recommended so let's take a look at that and we need a few options here so libndp ok we'll download that Configure and make. So that's all done. Chapter seventeen. Lib NDP. So DHCP, I don't use that at all, um, so I'm just going to skip that one, but obviously if you need it, you'll have to follow that one to install IP tables. So it's got kernel configuration, but again, I'm not going to be using this, so um, it's, I'm just using this purely as a, to fulfill the dependencies. Um, Granted that the application might use it in that case, then it might be worth checking these. I'll set, it, but um, I'm not going to uh, worry about that too much. So something about building um, extensions, but it does say that if you're not sure about them, then you probably don't need them. So um, I'll just ignore that because I'm not sure. So I'm just going to install the basic configuration here. Make install. So configuring, I'm not going to install a personal firewall. 
um, or a masquerading router, anything like that. Um, it looks quite involved, so I'm not going to um, do anything more to set it up. If I right, yeah, so I'm not installing the firewall, so I won't be installing the boot scripts either. But the library is there for whatever needs to access them. So IP tables, chapter 4. And I'll shut that tab down now. Back to network manager. Need newt. like we just copy and paste these commands. We've got GPM, we've got Python 3. And install it. So that's it. So that's chapter 10, Newt, shut that one down, and we move on to WPA Supplicant, so we've got all the dependencies, let's save this link, now I'm going to set up the wireless if I can. Um, I don't normally bother with wireless because it's just a, well it can be a nightmare. Um, I don't understand why I would want to have a slower connection that takes me possibly, you know, hours to set up or configure. Although admittedly wireless is a lot easier to configure when I can just get a cable and plug it in the back of the machine and have networking immediately. I, I really don't um, you know, I want to keep wasting my time with wireless. Um, although, as I say, it does seem to be a lot better configuring it than it used to be. Um, so let's quickly check the settings. Um, so we know we've got networking support because I'm using networking. I don't need to check that. I'll check wireless in the sources linux.config so that's set we need to see if the API has been set I think these are all set I'm pretty sure so these will all be configured so yeah set to a module um, wext is not set ok so we do need to change that Um, let's check the Mac 802.1. That's set to module, so that's okay. And these two, I'm sure, will be set. They, mu they must be set, actually, considering everything else that's been set. It's just that WEXT that needs to be set. Yeah, that's okay. And I think the WLAN must be set because otherwise you wouldn't get these Mac 8021 and config 8021 settings. So yes, it is. So um, what I'll do is I'll push the directory and go to sources linux make menu config oh, of course i need to be oh, what did i do that for 
Uh, right, start X again. Press the wrong buttons there. So I need to be root. Now I need to go into sources, Linux, make menu config. And I need to go to networking support, which is down here. And then under wireless. And so wireless configuration API extensions compatibility. So it's that one there. I can check it's the right one by looking at the symbol. There it is. So I'll set that. And that's all I need to check really. Um, one thing I will do is go to the device drivers into networking and wireless which is here right ideally I'd want to have all of these set um, I'm not sure what's in the Mac let's have a look see if we oh it's a USB I think as well wasn't it uh, Next term up here, LSPCI. So we've got Thunderbolt, card reader, Ethernet PCI. Oh, right, there it is. So it's a PCI adapter, a BCM 4360. So I need to make sure that's in built into the kernel or at least as a module BCM4360 so that'd be Broadcom so I can get rid of all these other ones then because they're unnecessary real tech Wi-Fi yep don't need that Right, it's a Broadcom, it's a 4360, so it looks like it's probably that one. Right, it says check LSPCI for something like this, so it says Broadcom Corporation, what well, it says Broadcom Inc. and subsidiaries, BCM43XX, we've got 4360, 802.11, we've got 802.11ac, wireless network adapter so it looks like it could be right so this supports the new 802.1.11g devices but not the old 802.1b devices Drive uses V4 firmware which was installed separately using the B43 FW cutter so that looks like firmware we need to install as well to get this to work B43 FW cutter let me make a note of that um, just stick that there for the moment let's look at this one here Right, so these are, it's mentioning some much earlier chips, the serial numbers or the model numbers are much earlier, 4301, 03, 06. So I would say that this is the correct module, but what I'll do, because I'm not really sure, is I'll put an M in both of them and hope that the um, let's put the debugging in as well I think I'll hope that the module the correct module loads um, 
at the right time. But it looks like I'll need to install some firmware. So let's see about the firmware next. Uh, let's put that in. Right, we've got some firmware in there. Oh, it looks like it's for sound cards. So I need to find out where to get this FW Cutter firmware from. B43 FW Cutter. So there's a download there. So I'm not really sure what this website is, so I'll uh, give that a skip for the moment. Have a look at this one. You would have thought that the Broadcom page would come up actually. Let's try. Trouble with a lot of these distributions, they might come down as an RPM or a DEB, and then we've got the problem of how to extract it. Ah, so there's a link there, now that might be useful. Not found. So this is helpful because we've now got a file name. That looks like it's direct from the manufacturer. Okay, this is turning out to be harder than thought. Okay, this looks like a good bet. It's on slacksbuild.org, so that's probably fairly trustworthy. Oh, it's taking the same link, unfortunately. Right, let's see if that's any good. So I'll go to sources. BLFS. Bear in mind this is for the Mac so if you're trying to get wireless on a different machine then obviously the firmware is going to be different, the configuration is going to be different. Um, this might even be di different between different Mac models um, but as I said at the beginning of these videos this is a mid 2014, I think it's a mid 2014 or late 2014, I think it's a mid one 2014 um, iMac so I'm going to make a temporary directory and extract that B43 file. Okay, this looks good. Oh, 
Oh no, this is just the script actually. Oh, that's a shame. Okay. Must exist somewhere in an easy to download format. Um, let me try Google. The uh, DuckDuckGo can be a bit difficult at times to find stuff. Right, this looks a bit more like it. That's, uh, here we go, this might be a bit of useful information anyway. So let's run this command. So this is a safe command, it just lists LSPCI and then puts it through grep to list the appropriate devices. So 43A0, so that's not in that table. No, so this might be out of date anyway. I was hoping, yeah, the, so we might be able to get some confirmation we're actually looking at the right driver. Um, Oh, these are specific products, are they? Okay, it's no good. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not sure. There's no date of when this was last updated, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, archival only. See the note at the end of the page. Status number, oh, we could take it off locking. Let's go to the new wiki then. And let's search for BCM4360. Um, no, this is not looking good. Is that where we were, I think? Right, this has got a fuller table. Right, looks like there's no support for it, unfortunately. 
yeah it's not supported that's a bit of a pain if you uh, do want uh, wireless what's this column chip ID I see Oh, sorry, yeah, we've got 43A0, beg your pardon. Yeah, so it's that one there. And there's no support for it. So there's probably little point in setting it up any further. Um, I was going to try and down, uh, yeah, download the firmware and build it into the kernel, but it seems like there's very little point. Um, so in that case... Uh, yeah, I might might investigate this further after I finish these videos because I must admit I've not tried to get it working when I've booted into, for example, Endeavor OS or Gentoo or anything like that. Um, it's a bit of a shame not to have a complete installation. Um, but for now, I'll uh, I'll leave the modules in there that. It obviously won't make any difference because there's no firmware there and I'm not even sure if they'll they'll load if it's not supported so I'll save the configuration I'll rebuild the kernel
Okay, so that's finished building. What I'm going to do now then is to uh, install that. So CP arch x86 underscore 64 boot VM Linux uh, dash 2 CP system.map boot system.map dash 2 cp.config boot config dash 2 and I won't forget this time make modules install Okay, so now um, what I'll do is I'll quit Falcon. I'll log out of this and reboot to activate that new kernel, which will be number 12 by the looks of it. Okay, so there's the chime, there's the menu, and it's booting. So we should have the kernel now with those changes, although obviously because the driver doesn't exist in the kernel, um, we're never going to get the... Um, wireless to work. So I'm going to go to my virtual terminal 1, uh, log in, go back to init 3 just so I can continue, continue to use my setup in TWM just out of convenience. So I log back in as kernel text now and run StarTex and we're back to the Falcon and kernel configuration so now if I go back to sources BLFS and you can see the kernel's gone to number 12 revision number 12 if I now look at the settings um, I exactly remember which one it was now. Um, if I do grep 80211 in sources Linux config. Right, I've got the config CFG as a module, so that's that one. Oh, it was the WEXT, I think, wasn't it, that was missing. So there it is there now, it's set. And the rest are already set as well. It's just that WEXT. So if um, WPA supplicant needs those options, they're there, they're set. But there's just no hardware for the um, driver to work. Uh, sorry, no driver for the hardware to work. Beg your pardon. So let's now extract WPA supplicant. And we can start building it. Um, if you wish to use WPS Applicant with Network Manager, make sure that you have installed DBus and XML. Then add the following to the WPS, WPS Applicant build configuration file by running the following command. And install, well, it's actually build. WPS supplicant with those commands.
get this built and if you want to build a WPA supplicant GUI program which we've got QT5 we can run these commands Okay, that's built, so now we install it. And it says if you've built WPA supplicant with DBUS support, you'll need to install the DBUS configuration file, so we'll need that. And if we built the WPA supplicant GUI program, which we have, we'll install that. We need to restart the system debus demon before you can use the WPA system debus interface. So let's try and do that. It might crash. The GUI. No, it seems to be okay. And then we need to update desktop database. Now configuration obviously is a bit pointless uh, me configuring this because there's no hardware um, to configure um, can't connect um, so I'm not going to bother to do any of this um, I'll come back if I find that I need to do it but uh, like I said there's, there's no point the hard there's no hardware it's inaccessible If I do SPCR minus K, uh, where's the wireless one? Ethernet, yeah, wireless network adapter. You can see that it's not got the kernel driver, or well, it's got BCMA PCI bridge, but no actual specific driver to activate it. Um, so it's a uh, Unfortunately, no go for that. Um, in fact, I did remember that um, when I've booted into Endeavor OS, that can't connect to a network when the um, wired network is not plug it, plugged in. So that kind of confirms that there's no way of getting this working if a distribution isn't able to get it working. <clears throat> then um, we're certainly not going to be able to do that. So all I can do with this then is to tidy up and move on. So WPA su supplement in chapter 15. Oh, I'll better make a note that it's no, not configured in case I need to come back to it. <clears throat> so I'll shut that down now and move back to networking utilities. Um, actually I guess I could install this DHCP, it does say client only. Um, and it would give full functionality to networking even though I would personally never use DHCP um, I'll do this in case you find it, you might need to use it 
So once again we need to just check some kernel settings. So we've obviously got net because we've got network access. Packet I imagine we've got. So config packet, yes. And IPv6 I don't use, so that's going to be set to no, I imagine. Or well, it might be set in the kernel, come to think of it. IPv6. Well, it is set in the kernel, okay. So we've got the kernel support that's required, so we don't need to do anything else there. Let's save this package and extract it. So, a couple of sets to fix working with GCC 10. No parallel build. And be careful with the single and double quotes because the defined variables are used verbatim in the code. Okay. Let's see if there's any options that look like there is. So we'll copy and paste this. I'll see if this configure works first of all. It looks quite a chunky thing. Okay, that looks like that's configured. So I'm going to run make. Minus J1 now.
Right, well, that seemed a little bit slow because it was running on a single thread. Um, but it's finished, so there's no test. Let's make install. Um, so if you only want to install the client, issue the following commands. That's all we want to do. Not to run the server. Not, certainly not on a desktop machine. And what's happened is that's taking a rather long time. Uh, is that because I restarted DBus? I know that can do strange things. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of this. I did wonder if it would affect things. Let's come out of that. I'll log out. Yeah, it is doing strange things. Okay. Um, so I'll do Control Alt Delete and just reboot from fresh, I think. would be the best thing to do. So I've just got the chime again. Wait for menu to appear and it should be booting now. Yep. Yeah, that, that D-Bus, um, it seems to interact with other programs that use it, I guess. And I have had it where it might not happen with TWM because it doesn't use D-Bus possibly. But I have had it where I've restarted the D-Bus daemon and it's just crashed the graphical desktop. So um, obviously that didn't happen this time, but it did seem to have an effect elsewhere. Um, so what I need to do now then is to go back to my virtual terminal, just go through this Palava. Um, I'll log in straight in as kernel text actually. And then sudo init3 and then start x um, ok so what I need to do now then is to go back to sources blfs and we're in dhcp and I was about to install this and it was the client. That's better. Um, skip to a section called client configuration in order to configure the client. So I'm hoping this won't affect any of my networking. I'll copy this in, so at least there's a config file there. Um, so, looks like I need to... Right, so we need this directory for the client leases when it's uh, got a lease to use credentials. As for tested dash clients being is paying expected by running the following command. Right, okay, this might affect the network. Um, see what I've got so there's my networking there 
times. Fall exists. I'm not sure if that's good or not. Add the Vader command above. Okay, so it has actually worked. It's given me um, an IP address in my DHCP range, so that's good. But the trouble is I've lost my fixed node, which I use, so my fixed address. So I'm going to try and reset that. Um, is it network? Restart. That's better. Okay, yeah, it's back to 157 as it was. So to configure that um, permanently, I'd need to install this client daemon, or boot script rather, and also configure the um, ifconfig file, which I'm not going to do because I want to keep using my static um, way of doing things so that's all I need to do so I'll tidy that up now uh, as the context user and I'll mark that off which is chapter 14 DHCP DHCP and I'll put a note next to it Client only and no net config Just to remind me that I haven't configured it to use it as uh, the network access. So that's um, DHCP done. So now we can install Network Manager. So let's save this. Uh, again, got some kernel settings to check, so let's check these. Net devices. So I've got that because we've got net network and device support. That makes sense. Bonding. Oops. Is not set. Okay, so we need to. Oh, these are just for tests. Um, let's see what else is set. So, dummy is not set either, and I guess net team probably isn't either. So, I don't think it's worth going through the effort of configuring the kernel. Um, for these tests, um, you'll know if this program is working when, when it's actually used. Uh, if, again, you're using this as a daily distribution to use you know, for your day-to-day -day work, then I would thoroughly advise making the effort to modify the kernel and run those tests. But um, for this, when, well, really network management, isn't done through the GUI on this system, it's done with config scripts and you can see they work perfectly. Um, it's very unlikely that you'd want to use this application but there is a chance, especially if you're on a, a laptop, your you're mobile, you may want to reconfigure um, the network but certainly for this desktop, this app, Apple Mac that I'm building for, um, it's probably not that necessary to have this package work, working um, at all actually but we're obviously building it just because it's part of the um, options in the BLFS book. Um, it's not a big deal if it doesn't compile correctly or break, whatever. So I'm going to carry on as it is, and I will try to run the test, but obviously I expect either failures or tests may be skipped. and may just run really quickly and only test a few things. So it looks like there's a capital N. Yep.
So if Qt is installed, some Qt based examples can be installed for the looks of it. So that might be useful because we have Qt. Fix it so it uses Python 3. Uh, what options are there here? Yeah, just Valgrind. Okay, now first I'm going to build or create the build directory and change into it. And then copy and paste this meson command and check what options have been mentioned. So we can add in docs is true to add in man pages and documentation. Building NMTUI, so it looks like that's another program. Yeah, that's being built. Right, remove the effort required libraries installed. So we've got the PSL, uh, which one's OVS. don't know which package provides OVS but I can't see anything in the packages we haven't installed that indicates what provides that either so I'm going to change the libpsl to true and the OVS option because I'm assuming we've got everything installed that's in the book so they should build so I put true there for OVS and true there for PSL. Mode of manager equals false. This switch is required if mode of manager is not installed. I admit this if you have built mode of manager. I think we built that. Yes, there it is there. So mode of manager equals false. So that's already false. Session tracking, login D, PPP equals false. Right, definitely don't use PPP, so I'm going to add that in. Uh, lib audit, not used, QT is false. Omit if you have Qt available and wish to install the examples, so we need to remove this line here. Let's try that. set link of a compiler okay so it's try to append minus o2 without a space and because it's appending so really this should have had a space in it there that's why that's failed um, it's appending it after the cxx flags that I've already got set okay that seems to have configured OK, so let's try compiling it.
Okay, so that's finished compiling. So to test it, it says an already active graphical section with a bus address is necessary to run the tests. To test run ninja tests, as I said, these might fail um, or we'll just get lots of skips because we haven't got some kernel options. I'm going to use this lang equals C setting to prevent the error at the end. It seems to be going all right. Well, it doesn't seem to be any there. There's none skipped, so I um, guess there's a bit of a question mark around whether those kernel settings are required. Uh, it does say five tests are known to fail, so luckily we didn't get those failures. So it looks like we've probably got a good build, which I didn't expect to know because of those kernel settings. I thought that might have interfered with the actual tests. Okay, so that's installed. We've got some configurations to enter. So this is just a minimal configuration file. This is to allow Polkit to manage authorizations. Uh, it says to use something other than the built-in DHCP client recommended if only using NMCLI. Use the following configuration. Edit values include either DH client or internal. So let's copy that. To prevent Network Manager from updating ETC Resolve, so this is quite a good one. It can be quite annoying if you make changes to Resolve and then Network Manager just goes and wipes out your changes. Um, to allow regular users to configure network connections, you should add them to NetDev Group and create a Polkit rule of grants access. So let's add that in. Oh, and it needs a username here. So I'll add kernel text to the NetDev group. Copy the rest of this. And that should be done. And to ultimately start network manager day when the system is rebooted. So let's see what that does. If this messes up the network settings then I'll remove this, disable it. But let's see what happens. Make install network manager. And let's start it now. Start Let's just check my settings haven't been changed. No, that looks still good. So that's Network Manager installed, and that's in Chapter 16. So I'll shut that tab down, and we'll go back to GNOME settings now. And I'll tidy up here. Okay, so now that's all of the recommended. We've got a runtime dependency here to build. 
I've got the dependencies for this one. Let's save this. And it's a straightforward installation by the looks of it. Cal D. So configure and make. Make check to test it. And sudo make install. And we've got some configuration files here. So these defaults are suitable for BLFS. More information about the entries is available as comments in the file. So let's become root. Uh, I think we've already got this file actually. Yeah, I thought so. This is going to overwrite that file, so what I'm going to do is to back this file up, I think. So now I'll copy this. Then the etc locale file should be regenerated. So let's take a look at this file. All right, okay, we haven't got that one. That's what I've been missing. If you plan to run X away on the Windows system, you may want to set up your X keyboard. The best way to do is to retrieve settings from the etc config console and feed them to the blocal the daemon. This should create a modifier. To match settings set in the key map. The code dot a key map. We haven't got key map set at the moment. Let's see if we've got this file. No, so let's run this. So that seems to have correctly determined the keyboard, uh, GB layout. Uh, I don't know how it's, oh, it's done it through the console, right, okay. So that looks like that's all worked. Quite what effect this will have when, um, let's have a look at source, etc profile. Yeah, it, it hasn't worked with the keyboard for me. It's actually reset it. Um, so that's still working okay. Uh, I don't think... Oh no, the keyboard wasn't set correctly on... in the GUI environment actually, so that's, that's no change. Um, Right, what I'll do is I'll mark this out off in the book. Chapter 12, B Locale D. I'll close that down. Go back to GNOME settings. I'll quit this. Tidy up. And I'm going to come out the GUI. Log out and log in again.
and star tax and just see if that's made any difference there. Yeah, it has actually worked now. My keyboard is set up correctly uh, as a US keyboard, so those options have worked correctly. I uh, just want to check the lane again because I'm curious about that. I don't quite understand how that was working in the script, but that's something I can look at later. Uh, so now we've got GNOME settings daemon we can finally build after that diversion with all the um, dependencies and kernel rebuilding. So GNOME settings daemon. Um, this Xorg Wacom driver, I believe that's for a tablet. Um, yeah, Wacom like tablets. It's like a stylus tablet type thing. So I wouldn't bother installing that unless you know you've got one of them and you need the functionality. Yeah, it would be probably totally useless otherwise. So let's start with this build said and another one. And then commands to build the package. Okay, then just test and we'll run this without lang to see if those settings in B locality have made a difference. Oh, no, they haven't. So I'll rerun that again with lang equals C. And I should expect to see no error at the end now. That's better. So they've all passed. Uh, now I'm going to install. And that's done. So that's GNOME settings daemon. So it's back to chapter 33. And I'll, I'll get rid of that tab. Tidy up. Okay, now known control center. So we've got a couple of dependencies here. In fact, several by the looks of it. So let's start with the first one, cheese. And this has a few dependencies too. Clutter GST. So simple configure make install, no tests. and install it and that's complete so clutter GST that's chapter 25 and I'll close that down and I'll go back to cheese now these GST plugins good So we've got all the dependencies there. 
save the tarball and a patch. So there's a warning there about the, or note there about the Objective C compiler. If you haven't got one installed, we have because we rebuilt GCC with all the extra languages. Um, if you need a plugin for a given dependency, that dependency needs to be installed for this package. We've got that as well because everything's already installed. So it's just a matter of copying and pasting the commands to build it. Right, that's built. Let's run the tests. Uh, actually, I'll rerun this with that lang variable set just so I can get the results at the end. Okay, so that's finished. All tests have passed. Let's do a ninja install. So that's done. I'll mark that one off. Uh, chapter 42. GST plugins good. Close that tab down and tidy up and we're back onto cheese now and that has all its dependencies in place so save link has download it and the patch and Right, so there's some settings in here for, in the kernel for cameras. So obviously this program is able to um, manage cameras and possibly download 
photos and so on so um, that's not so important um, it's the functionality that's important here so I'm, I'm not going to bother checking the kernel or uh, rebuilding it um, no intention of plugging a camera in having said that with the Mac um, it has got a built-in um, webcam so you may want to set this the one I've got on here doesn't work it's probably why I've been given this uh, Mac actually it's um, just comes up with black um, so I could I guess I could try it um, let's try grep so what's the first one called it's a long one in sources linux.config right so that doesn't even exist in the um, in the kernel it's not there so either it's been renamed or it's not been set but generally um, kernel symbols if they're not set it explicitly says they're not set so don't know what that's all about why that's not coming up um, especially as this is the version of the kernel that should be tied up with the book now that's not coming up either uh, could be that something's been disabled that's probably what it is yeah okay let me go to to root Uh, Linux uh, make menu config so let's look for camera support so there it is there Right, some multimedia support needs to be turned on and then multimedia devices right that's unable to be selected media core support Uh, auto select ancillary right that's that first option so that's been set but then under media devices um, there's obviously some other settings that need to be set for this right that's helped filter media drivers so media device types cameras and video grabbers and media USB adapters now that's probably because the USB support hasn't been set so let's see if we can find that drivers Let's start again at the top Imaging devices. Uh, right, what I'll do is come out of this, save the settings, and that's PCI. Uh, 
Uh, let's see if we can find the camera on here, what it's called. Um, it might be a USB device actually, LS USB in that case. Right, yes it is. HD camera. And that's the hardware ID of it. Uh, let's see if we'll find some information about this. HD camera. driver. Let's see if anything comes up here. some information here if my wheel will stop flicking the page let's see what this says creating a pro that's interesting Okay, so we need to set USB video class. Looks like that's all we need. There's an option there, so let's look for that. So there's two options there. USB UVC I would suggest we probably need both of them because one of them is an event driver UVC that one there Um, I would suggest we don't need that option. So let's search for that again. Right, so the other one has been set automatically, okay. So that should be it for the configuration of the webcam. So I'll go back to cheese and I'll search for these again now. They should be set. So grab that one in dot con fig. It's now set. Media camera support. That's set and USB support, that should already be set, I would have thought. It says select devices as needed, right, maybe I should double check that. I don't think, I think with the US UVC it's a, like a universal standard and I think things just work. So let's look for that option again, USB support, go to media drivers, Right, yes, we've, we've selected UVC, that is the driver. Okay, so that's fine. So, 
let's rebuild this. Right, that's complete. I just remembered while that was going through that I wanted to make some changes to remove um, some network drivers I remember seeing uh, a while back which um, are being built unnecessarily. Uh, network device support. Is it the Ethernet? Yeah, all these Ethernet devices. So. I want to keep in the one I'm using, so I better make sure. Let's just check what it is I'm using LSPCI. So it's this one here BCM57766. And let's see what kernel drivers in use. So it's TG3 I want to keep. Just making the kernel um, bigger than it should be. If I uh, show you, although obviously I've just changed some of the kernel settings so it will be bigger anyway, but if I show you the kernel, it's already grown. Oh, sorry, it's already shrunk actually. I'm probably tied it already some, already to tidy some stuff up. There's the working one. Um, there's the original one, so I've already saved half a megabyte, uh, and that's compressed as well. Um, so I imagine we're going to save for a little bit more by removing these. So network device support. I'll get rid of all of these.
right, so they're all deselected. So if I look for TG3 now, oops, do that again. TG3. Oh, no, that's not it. Um, I can't remember what it's called now. Is it Thai? Oh, no. Oh, I can't remember what it's called now. Um, right, I'll have to search the internet for that one. Oh, is it a... No, I can't remember. It's like on the tip of my tongue. Or tip of my head, back of my head, TG3 Linux driver. Right, it's Broadcom. Yeah, of course it is, yeah. Just realised that's just what I've seen when I did LSPCI. Uh, yeah, there it is. Oh, right, I was misspelling it. Tigon 3. Okay, so that's the one I want set, so that's fine. Um, I'll also. Going to the wireless, I think, yeah, these are all set here. Yes, that's probably why the wireless looked like it was half installed. It had the bridge in, if you remember, but not the um, actual device itself. So that's probably why none of these have come up so if I do help that's b3 that one's called that wasn't in the list uh, yeah these are all the b3 type oh uh, okay we'll save it yeah b3 debug legacy support there's nothing called b3 so you can see brcms mac Soft Mac. I suppose we could build these in, but like I said, I don't think they're going to work. Put that one in as well. Um, so I'll leave it. So that's all the Broadcom devices, basically. Um, if none of them work, then there's no chance that anything else will. So I'm going to rebuild the kernel again. And then do a reboot and hopefully check that the uh, network still works after all that. Right, so that's um, rebuilt and got to copy the, I don't think I copied the kernel previously, did I? Uh, and I did, yeah, because we just built 13, just built, rebuilt again to produce 14, that's right. So CP Arch. VM, oh no, it isn't, it's x86, x86 underscore to boot VM Linux. I'm going to call this dash 3 and I'm going to change this. I'm slightly worried I've got so many changes in the kernel um, of messing something up. So uh, I'll just copy that, make it number 3 cp system.map to boot system.map number three and cp 
dot config to boot config dash three. Then I'll have to modify the grub boot grub grub dot cfg and what I'll do is I think I'll create a third boot entry so this will now be entry one this will now be entry two so if I create a new um, menu entry So I'll call this the previous default kernel and I'll put dash two kernel and entry number zero is now default kernel and that's the dash three kernel so all I've got to do is to change the dash 3 in description and more importantly the actual kernel that gets booted so I'll save that and then I'll come out of here I'll shut this down go back to cheese quit the browser quit the GUI and once again I'm going to reboot ok there's the chime grub menu press enter and it's booting. Okay, and now I need to go to my first terminal. Log in as kernel text, sudo init 3, and then start x go back to where I was and uh, we're going to continue now with uh, cheese wasn't it I think yep cheese so we've got all these settings and I suppose I should download it I haven't done so already, so source is BLFS. Yes, cheese. Yep, we have got it. Okay. So, first we've got a sed, then a patch, and we've got some options here, but we don't need them, so we'll just build. Oh, silly me. I hope we've changed into the cheese. So I'll rerun that set again. And it shows I wasn't reading the screen, I was just copying and pasting blindly. So now the patch. That's better. And now the build instructions and ninja install and 
and that seems to have built ok so name applications chapter 34 that's the first one in that chapter cheese so I'll shut that down back to known control center tidy up cheese And we've got another dependency here, lib NMA. seems to be something wrong with this keyboard. I'm not sure if the batteries are running out or if there is something faulty with it. I'm hoping I can, it'll keep going to the end of these recordings, otherwise I'm going to have to try and find another keyboard. Yeah, it's missing keystrokes occasionally. In fact, it's getting a lot worse. Um, yeah, it could be the batteries, I wonder. Right, um, so this is got some options here, API documentation, which is my not in phone. Right, okay, so we'll just copy and paste this then. Okay, run some tests. Uh, I'll do another little test myself here. Just in the process of uh, trying to fathom out why this is not working. I'm going to try it with the UTF-8 locale, see how that fares, so lang echo dollar lang right, so lang equals so it's still ENGB but I'm using the UTF-8 version and then I'm going to run the test with that lang variable set like that okay, so it's definitely something wrong with the ENGB ISO 88591 um, maybe Ninja requires a UTF-8 language setting that could be all it is so anyway Ninja install and that's that built so that's chapter 17 lib nma Tidy that up. Back to GNOME Control Center. We've got some runtime dependencies now. So there's a tarball and patch to download so execute the patch apply the patch rather and then configure and build the package And then finally we install the package into the system as the root user. 
and it's done. So that's chapter 12. Cups PK helper. Shut that tab down. And back again. So now Gnome Color Manager. We've got all the options that are in the BLFS book installed, so that's good. If .wtools is installed, disable installation of the main, pill, main pages to avoid a build failure. So we have got it installed, we need that. Configure and build the package. Um, I'm going to export this lang variable I think just for this session because uh, it looks like we're going to have lots of um, ninja packages while building gnome and I'll just run ninja test now yep that's fine and ninja install So it's back to GNOME applications. That's GNOME Color Manager. So I'll cross that off. So we're jumping a little bit ahead here, but there are requirements for what we need to build, so it doesn't matter. GNOME Color Manager. Close that down. Back to GNOME Control Center. And the last one we've got to build here is sound theme free desktop and this hasn't got any dependencies. So this is straightforward configure make and make install. finished then the way it's come up with options it's um, making all in stereo yeah, it seems to have worked so sudo make install it seems to all be complete so it's chapter 42 sound theme desktop Uh, something free desktop, beg your pardon. And I'll shut that tab down. Back to GNOME Control Center. Tidy this one up. And finally we can start building GNOME Control Center. So we've got cheese, don't need that. And we've got iBus as well, so we only need to copy and paste this.
Okay, so that's built. Run ninja test now. That's all passed. So let's install the package. And that's done. So chapter 33, known control center. Shut that one down. Tidy up. And we're now on to Mutter, which doesn't have any unmet dependencies. So we'll just save the package. Okay, we've got a set here now. It goes off the width of the screen, so I've got to make sure I've copied it all. All the width of the right, I'll just have to um see why is that failed? Oh, I see it has, right, it hasn't shown all of it completely. So what I should do is I'll um, open this in a new private window. So I don't affect the sizing of the current window. Uh, grab this corner correctly. I'll expand this, go into Mutter again. Source. Oh no, I thought that had copied. Obviously, I hadn't. That's strange. I thought it copied that dot build on the end there. Yeah, it had. For some reason, it hadn't pasted. How strange. Uh, that. It's probably a shortfalling of fork and the fact that it's not wrapping this or maybe there's a HTML saying don't wrap this. Um, it is quite a long statement and they're usually broken up in the BLFS book. Okay, so now let's have a look at this. This sysprof is not installed. So we have got sysprof so we can ignore that. Let's copy and paste this. And wait for that to build now.
Right, that's built, so I'm going to run the tests now. This command here. Right, uh, so it looks like there's lots of failures there. No mutter is not installed. Okay, so this looks like it's another program that needs to be installed first before the tests run. So ninja install. Then LD config. And attempt to rerun the tests. That's better, we're getting a window popping up now. Okay, we've got some. Oh, right now it's complaining that the cursor theme is not available. I don't know why it, it is failing because there's no cursor theme mentioned here. We have got some cursor themes. So I'm not sure why that's. Um, failing. Uh, let's try running Ninja Test by itself. No, it seems to still install a cursor theme no, I can't explain that, the fact that we've um, built it as per the instructions all the dependencies are installed that are required GTK3 we've built with Wayland support, I'm sure that's not missing. Yeah, in fact it was built and there's no messages saying it needs to be rebuilt next to it. So I can't really explain that. Um, no, I just have to assume that it will run correctly when it's called upon. It looks like it is something to do with Wayland more than anything else. So anyway, it's been installed, so tidy that up now. <coughs> so that's chapter 33, Mutter. Shut that down and we move on to Gnome Shell. One dependency here. So telepathy mission control. So I'll just copy and paste these commands to build this. And make ch 
check to run some tests and make install and that's done so that's chapter 11 telepathy mission control shut that down and back to gnome shell it's got all the dependencies now so save link as Okay, so let's see what we've got to do with this. There's some options here. Um, there seems to be a patch mentioned here to fix a bug, but there's no patch to download. Um, So there's anything in the no there's nothing in the wiki. So I'm not sure if something's missing there or if that's from a previous version of the book. Um I think we can just copy and paste this as it is and build a package. Okay, it seems to have failed for some reason. Um, it's rather unusual. sure why that's happened um, I'll delete everything and try and build it with ninja jobs equals one in case that's an issue although there's nothing mentioned there uh, oh, I've got to take this off again in my Let's see if that builds in one core. Okay, so it's still failing the same way. Unknown name type cockle scan out. Um, so it looks like it might be something to do with clutter or mutter which we've just built. Mutter failed the test for some reason, half the test failed, I'm not sure why that was. Um, I guess we could try to build clutter again, I assume that's a dependency of mutter. Uh, no, it isn't actually. That's a bit strange. Looks like maybe it's its own clutter it's using as it's within this 
mutter8 include directory um, Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's see if there's any user notes for this one. No. Uh, I'm not sure why this is failing. So not at this clutter base compost in GTK plus window manager. Um Yeah, this is a, a bit strange what's going on here. We've got all the dependencies. There's a runtime. Look at GJS. Okay, um, what I should do is have a quick look on the internet. Um, so let's see if we can find, for example, this bit. Anything there? Nothing there at all. Um, that would tell me if there's nothing on the internet, it would tell me that um, there's probably. Some things that I've done, either I've made a mistake installing something, or it could be. Yeah, I guess there's three things actually that could be causing this. As other something I've done, like I say, um, I've missed a command or, or copied and pasted the command incorrectly, I've missed something out, configured something wrong, or it could be the optimizations I'm using. Although I believe Ninja doesn't use the C flags and CXX flags. Or a third thing, it could be this patch is required that's mentioned here. Um, so what I can do is there is a directory on the BLFS website with the patches. Um, let's see. If there's actually one missing, oh, my mouse has decided to switch itself off. Um, right. Okay, battery is replaced. Um, so, yeah, what I'm saying is there's somewhere here where they have um, a list of the patches for a particular version. It might be under download, actually. Uh, oh, I'm in download. Um, 
directory listing. Our patches, that's it. So we're looking for gnome shell, and no, there didn't appear to be one, unfortunately. Um, we could try looking at the previous version. So let's look at version 10.1. No, it doesn't look like it's, it might have been something that was in the development for a short while and um, that part of the manual hasn't been deleted. Um, okay, so that's a no-go. <clears throat> um, Right, let's have a closer look. Let's try the extensions equals false in case that may have a bearing on it. Let's just check this extensions. Ah, oh, right, okay, so extensions equals false. Doesn't seem to work. Um, all right, let's have a look at the meson options. Extensions. Right, that is the top. Extensions tool and extensions app. So extensions is not a valid option anymore. So yeah, it looks like maybe this page has been neglected a little bit and it's not completely accurate in its instructions to um, build uh, this package. Um, let's try and use and configure. Yeah, that's turned off one of the extensions. So if I put the other one in, extensions uh, app equals false. Today, is it? I'm not sure how Meson works totally, so I'll just clean the directory like that. Right, yeah, that's that's turned off those two. So maybe these extensions were one option originally, and as I said, the book hasn't been updated uh, to reflect that the new version of there's two options for the extensions, the app and the tool. Um, so let's try building that now. No, that's still failing. Um, so we'll turn the other options off. There was one D man, I think, was false. And network manager, let's try that one as well. One is deep. Uh, it in. It was false. But the trouble is, if I turn these off, they might be needed by something else. So it's not ideal if it does work but at least it will help to identify the area of the failure yeah so all the build options are off let's have a look at the outputs here to see if there's any clues um, so 
So it's found all these things here. So there's Mutter with Clutter 8, it's found that. Mutter with Coggle 8. Mutter with Coggle and Pango. Lib Mutter. So it looks like this is the bit it's complaining about. Um, but it has found it. Doesn't you stream my Python? So FD walk, I don't recognise that. So I'm assuming it's not in the book anywhere. Let's search for that in case that is something else we need. It's either we missed out of the book or I've missed it. So FD walk. So no, no, it hasn't found it, so that isn't part of the build. Sub project, so these are sub projects it's going to build. So that looks okay. Well, everything certainly looks okay. Um, not sure if it failed. I did see something like org gnome dot something, so I might have to look for that. Presents a namespace of some sort. Uh, let's try it with ninja jobs. I think it was one again, just so we can identify the exact part, the exact. Um, build command that's failing. So the number of pro uh, yeah, projects or tasks has been reduced by seven. The last time I built it was one six seven. And yeah, it's failed again yet again. So this is meson generate st enum types. And the mutter directory is being included there. And that's where the failure is. So I know it's some namespaces before, maybe there's other jobs that have failed. Um, Looks like it has used the sea flags there. That's what I've used, so maybe it is <coughs> building that in, or maybe that's part of what's built into Ninja when Ninja was built. Okay, let's 
tidy up again. And this time I'll clear the C flags and CXX flags to see if that's the problem. And I'll also unset them, or clear them at least for the build. Okay, and it's failed straight away. And right, I can't see those. Opt no, those optimizations aren't there. So okay, so Mizan and Ninja do use C flags and CXX flags. Then I'm not sure exactly which one, but obviously used. But that isn't the problem here. I can't identify any package that I've built that may have caused it. I've rebuilt loads of packages. I um, actually copied this onto another machine and tried it out. Um, and yeah, I still can't find anything. Um, I've rebuilt GDK 3, 4, Mutter, Clutter, Coggle, um, maybe a couple of others as well. Rebuilt them several times, modifying options and so on, and I can't uh, get, oh, even GDM, GJR, the JS as well from Firefox. Um, I can't identify what, what the problem is, so I'm leaning more to the fact that it's one of the earlier packages or library or something that's not compiled correctly or the optimizations may have affected it in such a way that it's only now that it's um, appearing. As I say, if it was something to do with the book, I would have expected that problem to have appeared as a search term. You know, somebody would have reported the problem um, as a possible bug or an error. So... Um, maybe something I'll have to do if I can't work it out. But what I've decided to do is to, because there's only three more packages to install for GNOME, is to install them, if, if it's possible, depends on how they rely on the GNOME shell. They probably don't, because GNOME shell, I think, is the program that runs when GNOME is started. I've just got the right mouse here. Uh, yeah, it's the main interface for the desktop environment, so um, I'll try and run it. I'll try and start it off when it's been built, um, or the rest of this has been built, but chances are it won't work, and unfortunately I'll have to leave it like that for the time being. Um, but I will carry on and install the other Nomad applications in Chapter 34, and then I'll install KDE um, and that will complete the videos. I'll make a little note next to this to come back. Fails to build and I'll carry on with the remaining three packages um, if, if that's possible. If they don't rely on GNOME Shell, I don't know if they do or not. So I'll tidy this up. <coughs> and just carry on as much as I can. Um, the application should build without the GNOME shells. So GNOME shells just the environment that um, is GNOME if you like. So let's look at this. So we don't need any dependencies here. Let's check this one. Thirty-three. Yes, that should be installed, shouldn't it? So luckily it doesn't rely on the GNOME shell, despite its name. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if this actually builds, because this, if this doesn't, 
does indicate there's something severely wrong with the build. So this is a straightforward, well that was quick, copy and paste and install. And that's done, okay that was nice and easy. So that's no shell extensions. Move on to GNOME Session. I think we've got all the options here. So we'll put this in in case we do use Wayland and that means on build. So this goes outside of the page. So I'll just copy that really carefully. Yep, that's all there. And there's no extra options. So we'll just copy and paste this. Unknown IO error. Okay, it looks like it's trying to uh, I'm sure if it's trying to access that as a web page or not. But it's a DTD so it could be just a designator possibly. Yeah, strange, it does say error, unknown IO error, but it hasn't stopped, it has actually completed the looks of this um, on Ninja again. Yeah, it's completed, so that's a bit misleading. So let's install. And complete the build of these two commands. Appears to have gone okay. So that's GNOME session. And the last one looks like just documentation, so I imagine this will be straightforward build. So straightforward configure make install. So I think I'll put this all in one. And wait for that to complete.
console built, no music docs, knock that one off, and close the tab down. So what I'm going to do now is to just tidy up. And I'm going to modify the XDM config file and try to boot into um, the GNOME Display Manager and see if we get any desktop. Well, something's going to go wrong because obviously we've got the GNOME shell not working. So I'll quit this. Log out of this. Do sudo init 5 to go back to the graphical login. And yeah, it's it's broken. Something's broken here. So you can see part of it's working, obviously, because we've got a message and a icon and everything. But because of this shell, I imagine that's why this isn't working. So all I can do, I've gone back to Virtual Terminal 1, set it back to init 3, and I'll re-edit the uh, XDM file to put back the LXDM login yep so back to how it was before so back to the virtual terminal back to init 3 so that I can use StarTex again So yeah, there's definitely something that needs to be um, looked at there. But in the meantime, what I'll do, like I say, is I'll carry on with Chapter 34, the no applications. So, uh, no applications. So I'll be all of these I'll be installing, and as you can see, we've installed a couple already. So let's start with this Boab, Boabab, how you pronounce that. So we've got all the dependencies. Let's download it. Uh, oh, it looks like I've left Smart One Tools there, so I'll delete that first and now I'll start with Boabab Boabab so straightforward copy and paste And what I'll do is I'll try and remember to test each of these as we build them. Just so we can see uh, what they are. So that's installed. So let's run it and see what it does. There's a window. Paste it so it's a disk usage analyzer. Okay, you can see all the details about the hard disk. So it looks like we've created quite a few files, quite a huge chunk of data there. Okay, it's one of these sort of things, is it? Okay, so you can see where far. Okay, that probably doesn't work because we're in TWM, um, but yeah, you can see it's telling us where various 
seems to have been allocated so it looks like a lot of the data is an opt there's user so now there's another large part of it and sources obviously where we're building so that looks fine it seems to be working fine I'll cross that off and tidy up Next, we've got Brazero, which is a CD DVD writer program for the GNOME. So, I've got a few dependencies to put in here. So, let's start with Libburn. configure and make so we haven't got oxygen so we'll go straight to make install and is that package done so it's chapter 45 lib burn Lib ISO burn next needs lib ISO FS Again, it's simple make and make install. Okay, so that's done. So that's chapter forty five again. Go to live I said burn. And again, a configure and a make and make install. Okay, so that's chapter 45 again, and I'll tidy it up, and shut the tab down, and now we've got DVD plus RW tools, recommended for runtime, which needs CDR tools, at runtime, okay, so let's save link as, Let's open it another tab. Let's check this one. That's okay. Package does not support parallel build. Okay. CDR tools. So we build it with these commands.
Okay, so that's built. Now it's time to install it. Okay, that's done. So that's CDR Tools, chapter 45 again. Close it down and back to DVD plus RW Tools. So I've got straightforward copy and paste again. And install it. That's done. So that's chapter 45 again. And shut that down. One more to build CD RDAO. So it looks like with this one that completes all of the CD DVD uh, writing utilities in the chapter 45 GTKMM. Looks like we can build that. So this is version 2, we've already built version 3. Ok, straightforward build again, we've got a set first, and a configure and a make.
Okay, it's finished building. I'll run some checks. Okay, so now we can install it. And that's done, so it's chapter 25. GTK MM version 2. So I've tied it up. Shut down that tab and we're on to CDR DAO. So, configure and make. That's done, let's install it and that's complete. So that's the CDRDAO, all of chapter 5 has now been built. We can go back to Brazero and build that. Okay, we can just copy and paste this as it is and install it when it's finished.
Okay, we've got linking problems, so I think this might be a time to run the remove LA files and then try the make install again. Okay. Link. Can't find LX11. Okay, so it looks like a similar problem with the um, Xorg library is not being found. So I think the best thing to do is to rebuild this. Run a configure help and just check to see There's usually a whiz option with package. That's installation directories. we need um, lips to pass the linker oh linker flags LD flags right so echo LD flags so it's not set and we've got library path is it yeah so I think we need to set LD oh I'll put LD flags it should be flags yeah so I wonder if we should do LD flags equals library path and then run the configure no it's not that simple Right, 
right, it says it's a directory as if it's looking for a file. Oh, it is supposed to be a lib directory. Um, let's put a slash after it. Right. Past the link, as maybe it should be link libs then. No, it doesn't like that either. forward slash user forward slash lib colon and then that no Such file directory that says Op org X is a directory that's as if it needs. Okay, looks like they need specific libraries as far as I can make out. Okay, yeah, so libs is specific libraries. Oh, minus L. Oh, I see the flags, right, I see. Until I don't know much about this, but I hope there's enough information there. So I need to put in minus L. Here it says, yeah, it's minus capital L, then a lib directory. If you have libraries installed in an unstandard directory, right, okay. So minus L, that directory there, that's better. So now, let's see what we've got here. So there's no information about that, but let's build it and see if the link will work this time when we run make install
Right, so that's built successfully again. So I'm going to try to make install. And yes, that's luckily worked this time. So tidy that up. And I'll run that so we can see if it works. Yep, there's the interface. And obviously, there's no CD drives plugged into this Mac, but it clearly appears to be working. Um, data project. So yeah, it does seem to be working fine. Jack, that shouldn't work here. Yeah, there's no disk you can find. Okay, yeah, it seems to work. I've got an ISO image and it wouldn't work anyway. Okay, so that's Brazero. And we'll skip cheese because we've got that. Um, in fact, I'm not sure if I ran that or not. Let's run it now. No device found. Okay, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why it hasn't found the camera. Um, I presume it will be under dev video. No, it's not found it for some reason. see it there, I'm not sure what module it is called now, but at least the window came up anyway, um, and like I say the camera doesn't work, it comes up with a very dark, um, nearly black like a charcoal coloured screen when I've tried it. So yeah, we'll assume cheese is working okay, like I say the window pops up fine, so we'll move on to EOG, I have GNOME which I think is a image viewer, yeah. So we've got all the dependencies, let's download it. And build it. So it looks like we just Right, so if you want to have flat pack support, remove that option. Um, we have got libportal installed as you can see. So I'll create the build directory first. Now, I don't personally use flat packs because I run Gen 2. But I will build it in here as we've got the library already built. And also, uh, no we don't want documentation so I'll just so we want documentation, but not the API. So that's that. Let's run Ninja. Okay, and Ninja install.
and update sudo update desktop database okay there's one I wonder if that's the uh, JavaScript that's been installed because um oh no we did install Firefox didn't we yeah I'm not sure why that's happened um, now I'm not sure if we tried Nautilus but let's try it now things were in the GNOME application oh yes I think we might have done that seems to work double click on that text file it's come up with lever office and it shows the setting that I've got so that's fine quit that quit Nautilus so that's obviously working let's try I have Okay, yeah, I seem to remember this didn't quit properly. I have no. I'm um, not sure if I'll be able to find any images or not. Um, generally, there's someone to share, so I'll try and have a look there. Uh, if I can drive this thing, I'm not very good with no interface, it uh, confounds me. I'm not sure how to drive this uh, so what I'll do is I'll quit this I'll tidy it up first um, and I'll look in user share PNG for example okay so there's loads there so if I go to for example this directory and do BOG I'm hoping it will load images in that directory yeah it seems to have done that so there's an image there it will be small you can see it is indeed working so that's all okay let's mark that off and we've now got events which is a PDF type viewer um, used to actually be my choice for PDFs but now ocular seems to have got better in my opinion um, but events is still good so this needs G spell as a dependency. Configure and make. Run some tests. One failure test checker. Okay, that's because that external package is not installed. So let's just install the package now. And that's chapter 9 G spell. Tidy that up and close the tab. Now we can install events. So there's a fix here needed for systems with text live as we have. Let's 
copy this a bit at the time. So let's create the build directory. Copy the meson command. And just check the options here. So now I've got GTK docking force. So we've got G spell, so we could put this in. Oh no, I see it's saying that we can turn it off. Introspection force, got that, got that. If Lib Spectre is installed, so we haven't got that. So I think actually just as it is will work. And let's run Ninja now. Okay, that's built. So that's now installed. And that's done, so let's run that. There's the window, so I'm going to try and load again and use a share. There should be some PDF somewhere. Um, let's see if there's a PDF directory. GIMP help no, there's any images go script examples ok yeah there's some so annotations so yeah there's there's one there uh, seems to be fine So it looks like it might have annotations, but maybe they're not displaying correctly, possibly. So that looks all fine. So I can actually make this a bit bigger. So I can see this graphics a bit larger. Yeah, that's fine. It's it's enlarged them without loss of detail as you expect so that's all good so I'll tidy up and shut that one down on 34 and move on to evolution so evolution is a mail calendar and address book. So a couple of dependencies here. Bogo filter is the first one. Get the other one ready as well, I think. Oh, 
looks okay. Okay, so extract bow go filter. Plan to change the version of that is a slide from an existing installation. Right, okay, so we're not planning on that, so let's just Okay, so there's an option we can add here to change the database now. I know for a fact that we've got SQLite 3, so we could put that in. SQLite 3. Actually, it does say if you plan to change the version or on an existing installation or to change to a different database. Oh no, that's that should be alright. So I presume that means on an existing version. Okay, so it should be alright. So that's built. Let's run make check. And sudo make install. So that's general utilities. I go filter. Shut that down. Next one we've got is seahorse. So it looks like we just copy and paste these commands. We've got LDAP installed, so we don't need to disable it. We can do ninja install. So Seahorse is part of chapter 34 anyway. Further down, so that's installed. Tidy that up, and now we can do evolution. here right looks like we can change the contact maps to on So 
So let's see if that configures. Seems right, Ninja. And wait for that to build now.
Okay, let's finish building. So pseudo ninja install. And that's done, let's test it. Um do not change settings. So let's cancel about setting up a an account. Just want to quickly have a look at this. So yeah, no, looks pretty much like any other email program. Contacts calendar task memo yeah that looks fine and with that so evolution let's type that up mark that off next we've got something called file roller It's only a graphical interface to archiving utilities such as tar and zip. And it says it's got support for other compression utilities, uh, yeah, utilities there as well, so I presume it will do all of them. Save link as. Okay, so it looks like we just copy and paste this. And install it. Skip down here, we need to run these commands here. it so we should have something called file roller file roller dot listings not installed no, I'm not sure what that means Setting schema. Which I makes me wonder if there's some common package here not installed correctly or not installed at all or uh, something funny. A lot of these known packages seem to be a little bit funny. Oh, hang on, it looks like the installation failed. Oh, that might be it. Okay. Uh, again, to do this character set thing. So I'm going to set my character set again. Uh, echo lang. Yeah, I'm going to export it as en dot sorry, underscore gb dot utf. Eight and if I run Ninja install again. Sudo Ninja install. Right, yeah, that's run without failure this time. So I'll just run this chmod again in case that needs to be set. And now I'll try the file roller again. That's better. Okay, so it looks like it wants a. Do I click on this? No. Open. Oh, we've obviously got plenty in root. Sources. Uh, let's look at that one there. 
So yeah, that definitely appears to be working. So that's fine. Let's tidy that up. So I'm wondering if I've done an Indra install on a package somewhere that hasn't actually installed completely because of this character set problem I've had right from the beginning and that's why I can't get that gnome shell to install. I bet that's the problem. So I'll tidy that up. Mark off file roller and we've got gnome calculator next. GTK source view as a dependency. And a patch. patch and just copy and paste the installation commands Okay, let's run the tests. All passed. Install the package. And that's done. So GTK source view, which is in chapter 25. And there's three versions here. We want version 4.81. Shut that down and we can now do known calculator. So there's no other option, just copy and paste to build it. Test or past. That's done. Let's test it. Okay, tidy that up. So mark that off. We've done the next one, which is GNOME Color Manager. I probably haven't run it, so let's quickly run the executable that it has. Um, looks like several here. Let's try the first one. Okay, 
that doesn't come up with anything. Because that's got a window that's appeared. I'm not quite sure how. Oh, right, you need a colorimeter. Okay, we've got one of those, so I'm hoping this will do something a bit more useful. So, yeah, it looks like there's some information there. So, that looks okay. That's obviously running. So, I'll move on to GNOME Disk Utility. Um, once again, we've got all the dependencies. Again, simple build. And that looks like it's failed, even though there's some errors again. If I rerun Ninja, it just says no work to do, so it's given us errors, but it has actually completed Ninja install. That's finished. So let's have a look. Is used to set up disk images, so this probably sounds the best one to run. There's a window. Let's have a look. Yep, it's showing us stuff. It's even got temperature of the disk at the moment, which is quite cool considering that it's in use all the time and it's an SSD, so that's good. So we've used about 10% of the available space on the route with the looks of it. Click on that, that's actually opened up Nautilus by the looks of it, so that's quite handy. And a swap partition. And looks like we can do lots of other things from here as well. Okay, so that's GNOME Disk Utility complete. Let's move on to GNOME Maps. We've got all the dependencies. Let's download it. Save link as. Build it. Install it. And let's see if we can run it as well. So, yeah, it's come up with a map. So I imagine this is downloading off the internet real time. Okay, looks like the wheel works. Okay, so that looks fine. And on to net tool. Tidy up and I'll put the mark that one off. Who is is a dependency? OK, 
Okay, so it says you can choose what you want to install, but it says install in this version of make password, I'll overwrite the same command installed in LFS, so I won't install that one, I'll just install the other two commands. And that'll be that. So that's in chapter 16, Networking Utilities. Who is? And shut that one down. And we can download this now. So there's the main tarball and a patch to download. Oops. I'll do that. Save in case. Alright, okay. I must have selected a link and then pressed enter to view it. So we've got patch first and configure and make. And install. That's complete. So gnome that's tool. Yep, there's some information there. So it looks like that's all okay. Let's ping it myself. Fine, so let's quit and mark that off. So next is GNOME Power Manager. Got all the dependencies, let's save it. Again, copy and paste. Run some tests. And install. And let's run it. GNOME Power Statistics. Okay, so it says it's for power consumption laptop hardware, so that's probably why there's not a lot of information here. So I'll just control C on that. So not really useful for a desktop, but if you are building on a laptop, then obviously that's going to have a, a bit more use. So GNOME screenshot. Tidy up. So again, copy and paste. And oh, and I've mistyped the ninja command, so I'll just run it by itself. sudo ninja install in order to best run known screenshot from command line the i option needs to be specified so let's just run it so we get the GUI 
and all oh, that's come right I'm not sure if that has actually yeah so it looks like maybe I do need to run it with the minus I for interactive so I see what they mean now I thought it meant that if you want to run it from the command line to use the minus I it's actually the opposite so let's take a screenshot of the screen and I'm not sure where that went, oh right there it is, so it's given us the option to save it so I'll save it, let's run it again and I'll do just a window this time screenshot didn't ask me which window I wanted I'll cancel that let's take screenshot and then make oh, I was too slow wasn't I that failed as well I'm not sure how that works let's try a selection So yeah, that seems to have worked okay. I'm not sure what happens to the window one. Let's use now EOG. I have known to view the current directory. Okay, that's not working like that. That's a shame. So let's do EOG star dot PNG, see if that works. No, okay. This is not easy to use. I'll try it just as EOG in this directory. No, it's not like I'm used to Gwen view and that gives you like an icon view of a direct if it's a directory and if it's an image you've specified it will display that image or set of images, so um yeah I'm, I don't really know why this is behaving like this. Oh, okay, it didn't save here, did it? It saved. Right, let's try EOG. In the root. Right, that's better. Okay, so there, wasn't, there were no images. That's where I was getting those up. So, yeah, this is obviously working. That's fine. Okay, so let's tidy up. Mark that off, and let's got a system monitor. So again, we've got the dependencies. Let's save in cas. So once again, just copy and paste. and install it and as we look at this and the usual thing shows the process is running what's we've got here number of resources so I can see the CPUs that are in use the memory cache uh, swap, sorry, not cache, and the network activity as well. 
Uh, file systems, there's a summary there of systems on what that dev rock is. Or, oh, dev root is it, maybe, yeah. <clears throat> oh, I see, it's the partitions that are mounted. Okay, yeah, the file systems. So that looks all right. Home system monitor. So move on to GNOME terminal. Tidy this other one up first. Can we can just download it. And extract it. So configure and make. We don't have GNOME shell installed, so I think we're going to have to add this on. Otherwise, that could cause the build to break. Right, and it looks like the test might fail as well because it says to run known terminal environment language. A variable lang must be set to UTF-8 prior to starting the graphical environment. So it's very likely to fail because of that, but I'll try it anyway, see what happens. Yeah, it, it has failed. So I can't actually start that or test that at this time. But I'll mark that off. At least we know why it's failing. And move on to GNOME Tweaks. Save link as. Oh, best to tidy up first. So remove some incompatible files as the root user. Oh, if you're upgrading, right, okay, so we don't need to do that. Install it with these commands, so I just copy and paste again. And city ninja install. I'm not sure what this package does actually. I'll tweak some advanced GNOME settings. Okay, so just some configuration that can be made to GNOME itself. So I won't alter anything there. And at least the program appeared and seemed to run. So that's GNOME tweaks. GNOME weather next. and run some tests and install the package and let's run this now so 
and then okay and there's some information about the weather here at the moment okay that looks okay no weather Knock that off so I've just got two left now to build. Next one's this Goo Char map. So we've got the dependencies. A couple of database files. All right, okay, we've already got these. Looks so it must have downloaded them for another package. to command all these several commands there actually and I'll copy and paste this mise on command because it looked like there's several options to change here Okay, that's all we need to do, I think. So, Ninja to build it. Char map should get a window pop up, and there it is. So, character maps for the different fonts. Obviously, some don't work, maybe they're not installed. But there's other ones there. So, that appears to work fine. off the list and tidy up and move on to seahorse we've already done so the last one we've got in this section is Vinagra Vinagra. So we need GTK BNC. Okay, I think we can just copy this as it is and run ninja install and that's chapter 25 GTK VNC so 
Probably that up. And now we can download this one. So I would just copy and paste this. And make install. That's it. So it's a remote desktop viewer for the GNOME desktop. I uh, can't quite see what that says there actually. Disables keyboard shortcuts. So the keyboard shortcuts are sent to the remote desktop. Okay, well I haven't got any remote desktops to connect to, so it's pretty useless. So I'll just get rid of that and disconnect, or quit rather. So that's for Nagra done, and that completes all the GNOME applications. Um, right, I just remembered I mentioned KDE next, but I've forgotten that I haven't done XFCE or LXDE, so um, I'll be starting them in the next video. Um, that shouldn't take too much longer to build, as they're quite small, relatively small anyway, and as you can see I've already installed four of the package out of XFCE just by installing other packages, so I'll start that in the next video.